Hey, it's me, the mouth of the sound, Jimmy Hart. Hey, check out my new tag team, baby, Money and the Pharaoh. Hey, Jimmy, don't forget to tell them about Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast. Well, you know what I would, but you already did it. It's Monty and the Pharaoh. The Monty and Pharaoh show. Monty and Pharaoh, bro. Monty and the Pharaoh. The Monty and the Pharaoh. You've got the future Hall of Famer, that rocker, Marty Gennetti, MJ in the house, and I'm sitting here with two more future Hall of Famers, Monty and the Pharaoh. We're doing that stuff and we're going to rock it. Monty and the Pharaoh. It's Monty and the Pharaoh. 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 And Monty and the Pharaoh. Oh, is it Monty and the Pharaoh? Yeah. Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. Hey, cut <laughs> music. When you want the best in professional wrestling, Long Island, there's only one place you're going to get it right here. Monty and the Pharaoh. <laughs> now, that's not just the coolest, and that's not just the best. That, my friends, is just <laughs> incredible. <laughs> Monty and the Pharaoh. Duh. I'm having a wonderful time with Monty Nefero, and I'm gonna play with the cross face chicken, and he's gonna go down right now. Yeah. <laughs> hey, not get a call off the Russian nightmare. And you're watching the number one show on Long Island with Monty and the Pharaoh. Well, I used to think I was in shape. Someone for me. I'll see you later. Look at this. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? What? I can't get down. Please. <laughs> <laughs>
talking about what to do and you know, they got these people all these promoters that are calling in and uh trying to figure out trying to maybe get the belt on on uh, rick flair and uh i said well what why don't you tell them to try it and i'll just do what i want to do anyway and uh a little few net few uh a few uh, hours later rick flair comes down coming in and said don't hurt me there you go that's right there you and go then, and then we went on and then he 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 um they they made us do a kind of thing where he won the match but I, or, and i didn't lose the title back in those days this was junior high high school for us uh his favorite was Magnificent Morocco. Yeah. My favorite was Greg Valentine. Guess where you come in? Oh, no. Here he comes. He's going to beat my guy. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to ask you about the night of my, I think it's the 14th birthday, Greg Valentine, who you fall on top of. Yeah. I remember and, the match. I and, remember and, the match. And the referee counts. Through, and Valentine pops up, and he tells the referee, I won, and he walks out with the belt. Any memories of that particular night oh, and yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. what went yeah. on behind the scenes? What was it like working with Greg Valentine? Because for a whole week, I almost thought my guy had won the belt. So yeah. much for me. Well, he was a he was a great, great wrestler. He'd been in the business for a long time, and his father was in the business. Johnny. And his sure. father was uh, 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 had some really great things to do. He could uh, get more heat. He, they figured they'd get, and uh, the people really hated him, and, uh, and that's a good thing it's, it's, it's for him. It's, it's not a bad thing, um, but uh, Greg Valentine developed into a good wrestler too. Like he had the figure four leg lock mm -hmm. for his ending, and we'd go an hour match. In the last thirty seconds, he'd have the the uh, the the hold the, the hold with your legs. He had it on me, and the bell would ring, and they all thought I lost. <laughs> but you know what? The time went out. And now we got to come back and do it again. Was he one of the first guys you went 60 minutes with? No, I, Harley Race. Harley. Uh, Ric Flair. Uh, um, yeah, I went, uh, uh, let's see, uh, Don Morocco. Okay. Uh, Jesus, uh, everybody. We were at your Texas death match with Morocco at the Garden. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. That's how far yeah. back it goes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I had a lot of, I had a lot of, Don Morocco, I had 14 hour matches with him. <laughs> And they kept telling, Vince Seniors kept saying, he, he said, well, I, I'm waiting to get it right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's boy. funny. That's, yeah, cha-ching, cha-ching, <laughs> cha-ching. Still <laughs> waiting till you get it right, cha-ching. How about the list of guys you went through during our, our high school years? It was ridiculous. Uh, Adonis, Morocco, Ventura, Playboy Buddy Rose, Mosca. Can I say Killer Con? Can, say Can Killer I Con? throw in Why Killer not? Con? Why not? was in there. I mean, yeah. This, yeah. this list is unbelievable, but the greatest... The greatest one I, 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 that for me just stays in my mind was the storytelling with you and Jimmy Snooker, that cage match. Can you, can you fill us in yeah. on, on that? What a moment. Well, he, he, uh, you know, he, he, uh, he was a little shaky when he's in the ring. Oui. But he, 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 we were in the cage, and he, he climbed up the cage, and then there was another something over the cage, so he climbed up the top of that. And I was down on the, on the floor of the mat, and he jumped down and uh, tried to land on me, and I moved out of the match. I moved out of the way, because I wasn't going to let him hit me because he was off balance uh, most of the time. Mm. And I, got, I dove out of the ring, and I kept the belt. Well, there's a moment. Talk about storytelling. Oh. He, he, I think he comes off, you could correct me, comes off that top rope, maybe with like a, a, a cocoa butt. Yeah, okay. And then he decides, hey, He's not just going to do the superfly splash on you. He's going to the top of the cage. Yeah, up. that's what he did that day. But you do the pop-up. You see he's going up, so then you act like you're out unconscious. And yeah. then when he jumps, you move out of the way. Yeah. That Was that your idea? Was, is that your writing yeah. right there? Yeah, I let him think that he was going to get me. Uh, that, is, that, is, that is one. I was there live. Yeah. And that was one of the most. That Talk about telling a story in a wrestling yeah. ring. Yeah. That simple move, incredible. By the by, the way, I know it sounds. I don't even know how this sounds. Is that something you guys can even practice before you have it no, happen? No, there's oh no. Oh my God! No, you don't do that. So that was a one take. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Dude, yeah. I'm amazed at that. I'm and you know, when he started that. going up there, I acted like I was going to grab him, and then he just turned out and laid down on the floor. <laughs> That's oh, great. Boy. Uh, he, they had me in the car one night, and they started smoking marijuana. And I rolled my window down, and they rolled it back up. 
And a couple minutes later, I said, stop the car. I want to get out. I don't want to be in your car. Right. And they wouldn't stop. And, and you all know the ones that were in the car. Yeah. Uh, the, click, the click guys. They wanted to be in a click all together so they could get power. Right. And I, I, I knew all about that. And I, 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 I didn't do that. I, I walked away. They, they went in the bar. And, well, we, we, and I, I walked home from there. It was in, a, in Georgia. Wow. And I was, uh, and I, there was one of the guys that I had a lot of respect for because of what he did in amateur wrestling. But I lost that respect after seeing him do marijuana and after him, him wanting me to do it with them. They wanted to be in their push so they could put pressure on somebody if they want to leave. And everybody would leave with him, the persons, that, the people that were smoking. Did these... Uh these partying guys uh, ever make you feel isolated afterwards or try to bully you in the locker room? Oh, this guy's a square. Did you have to deal you know with what? any of that nonsense? There was nothing said, no word was said about that. There you go. And that was in the book. There you go. He put him in a chicken wing anyway. Without a doubt. That would be the end of that. Was it your choice or Vince's to put it on the Iron Sheik? That was theirs. I didn't, I didn't, uh, I don't. I don't get involved with the angling of what's going on in the ring or okay. what's happening in the ring. So you didn't feel strongly one way or the other as to how your title change what, was going to go what about. What you were going to do? No. Fair enough. No. Fair I enough. let Vince Senior pick the time, and he he picks the guys, and I just go in there and um, have the matches and try to protect the match and the, and the champion. How did you feel about Iron Sheik take? Because I got just as a fan. Watching you all those years, your entire reign, I watched you beat ba uh, Morocco. I watched you beat Valentine. I watched yeah. you beat Mosca, Khan, Stan Hansen. Yes. I watched you beat all these guys. Sabisco, and, Slaughter. And then you lose to the Iron Sheik. And as a fan, I was confused. I'm like, he's not as good as Stan Hansen. He's not as good. What a nerd I am anyway. Well, How did you feel about the Iron Sheik? The Iron Sheik. The Iron Sheik was an animal. Iron Sheik was an animal. Obviously, in real life, obviously. He was in a country and worked in that country. He was a Shah's bodyguard. <laughs> and they, he had a, a person that he was his roommate, and they found him dead. He came to Minnesota because he was a wrestler. He was in the Olympics in Mexico. I like somebody that knows how to wrestle. There we go. That we've heard. Yes. And, and, uh, but he ended up coming to Minneapolis, and he helped Vern Gagne train people. And I, so I knew him before he came out here, or out down into the WWF. And I, I knew how he was, and I knew he knew how to wrestle. And I think a wrestler should have the opportunity to get a belt, and I didn't mind him getting it. Okay. So, Bob, one of the great interviews again, is when you lose the title to the Ooh. Iron Sheik. Oh, man. Lord Alfred Hayes is interviewing you. That was great. The emotion that you show, I have to ask, was that true emotion? Here you are, five-year champion, people loved you, and it's got to hurt when they're taking the title from you. Was that legitimate emotion, or was that purely acting? You know what? When I speak... It doesn't come from here. It doesn't come from over there. Oh, yeah. It doesn't come from over there. I don't make things up, but it comes from here. There you go. I say what my heart wants to say. That's my tool. And you can say, this guy's almost crazy. But I don't care. Oh. I'm doing my job, and I'm trying to do it the best I can. And I want to be for those people out there, not the ones inside the club. Yeah. Wow. I love what I'm doing. I did anyway. And uh, the Sheik, I knew he was a great wrestler. And I respected him. And you know what? He says some bad things about some people once in a while in interviews. <laughs> but he's never said a bad thing about me. Who could say a bad thing about you, the Bob? Bob Backlund. To be honest with you, who could say a bad thing about you? Yeah. I, I, you know, I don't, I don't know, but I'm just saying, you know, he, he, uh, he takes advantage of some words with some people. Understood. If he, if he doesn't like them, mm. but he, he appreciated what we did in the ring. 
Bob, you represented to me, and obviously historically it's been proven to be true anyway, uh, you were the last of the great, when it was sports first and entertainment second, in my mind, because as pretty much right after your champion, we're, we, we have WrestleMania, yeah. here comes Hulkamania. How did you feel about Hulk Hogan when you first got the news that Hogan was going to be champion, did yeah. this bother you? Was Hogan what you don't think of when you think of a professional wrestler? I'm curious as to how you felt felt about that. Yeah, well, I'm thinking about somebody that you know that knows how to wrestle, and it's a good thing to have that experience. But uh, you know, I'm not, I don't mad him. I didn't try to beat him up or anything like that. But uh, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, Vince McMahon says the words, and I do the job. Did you feel it was the wrong direction, or did you see that Hogan must have well, something? I, I just knew it was going to happen. Right. And uh, right. Um, it, uh, it, uh, the, it, it, that's the way the business is. Right. The bus that's what the business does. Sure. So we're trying to, we're trying to tell a story that will draw people in to the arenas, and uh, and come and follow you and do that and that. Yeah. So, Bob, you explained earlier, right, that they wanted to turn heel, dye your hair black, and, you know, your daughter was growing up and you didn't want to cause any issues. Is there any regret in maybe you could have did that program because maybe you would have been part of WrestleMania 1, mm, that game no. changer? Is there any wow. regret from Bob Backlund no, at all? I, no, no I, I never got yeah, there. They, 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 they didn't want me. How did your wife and daughter handle your schedule? And uh, were well, they super supportive? Like, how did that work? It, it was it was a long road, and uh, my wife was in North Dakota, and I was in uh, down in uh, Texas, and uh, we you know we that's where I met her, and um, I got I had uh, I used to call her on a uh, on a certain day and talk, and uh, she got a, her g dream job right after college, and she was working there, and I called her on my fourth time that I called her. She said, I quit my job. I said, you quit your job. That's the job you love. And she said to me, I got to be with you. Mm. I love you. And she drove her car from North Dakota State University, stopped in Princeton, Minnesota to save my parents, and then came to live with me. Mm. Are you watching wrestling presently? We don't have a TV. Okay. Wow, I thought I was the only one. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. How come? We don't want one. Nice. <laughs> Boy, he he keeps it simple. I don't want one either. What is your what's your diet and exercise like? Diet? I eat, I eat meat uh I get meat from a farmer that uh has it's it's all there's no drugs in it anything. And uh, I eat, uh, have potatoes with it. I steam it, and I uh, have potatoes with it, and uh, certain other things I put in there: some broccoli and some uh, onions and things like that. And uh, that's pretty much my diet. Do you get those things from the farmer too? Because I'm picturing you not even going to the supermarket. You just go to the farmer. <laughs> no, I go to the farm. <laughs> wow. It's stay, he's stay, got, a, he's yeah. got a farmer. So Bob used to do those steps all the time. Uh, and the, the Harvard step test is what they call it. Absolutely. Yeah. You couldn't do that anymore, could you? I could. Come I on, could. stop it. No way. Come on. No way. Yeah. Show me something. Can you look? With all due respect, you're in great shape. How old are you right now, sir? Seventy-one. Seventy-one in great shape. There's no way you can do any kind of test of strength. That. Uh, yeah. You know, what? Uh, what? I. What about that wheel? You roll the wheel. That's up. right. Yeah. yeah. You still do that too? I used to do 400 reps a day, uh, with that wheel. What can you do now? And I used to do the step test for an hour. Can you? But uh, you think uh, I'm lazy? Yeah, a little bit. What? Sure. You, you yeah. Think, when you get older, everybody you, gets you lazy. You think I've lost all my strength? To be honest, Bob, yeah, I think so. Oh God, will you man. do? Will you do what I do if I do something? Oh, now you. Sure. Why not? I oh, don't say that. What are you gonna do? Just walk? I can walk. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. Don't bring them over here by me. I'll find them my own business. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What is going on here? Yeah, I'm going to do it here. What are you going to do? Okay. 
Okay. Oh no. Oh no, no. Go here. And here. What? What? What the? Look at that! Holy cow! You're gonna do this next, right, Mike? Um, no. <laughs> oh my God! What? He's wiggling his toes. the valentine lost <laughs> <laughs> holy cow dude this is ridiculous well i used to think i was in shape so much for me i'll see you later look at hey, this wait a minute wait a minute, wait a minute. What? what i can't get down <laughs> <laughs> Bob, what is your greatest favorite moment in professional wrestling? Do you have a match that just you always think about? What is the your favorite moment in your entire career? Do you have that's, one? That's pretty hard to, uh, you know, I have a lot of favorite. Uh, like when uh, Greg right. Valentine, uh, when he had me in the figure four leg lock and I was about to, and the bell rings, uh, it, that's kind of a, uh, it was a strange moment. And then when he walked out with the belt one night, uh, that was a strange moment. That was but uh, uh, it, uh, you uh, see, he's you mentioning know. my guy. He is. My he is. guy. He is. He is. There we go. Thank no, you. I have. I. I don't have any problems with anything that uh, went on in in the ring, uh, and uh, I mostly find that uh, everybody was uh, trying to do it the best they could sure. uh, and uh, entertain the people. All right, we I'm going to hit you to be entertained. You want you to be happy. Yes. You want. We want you to be. Hey, I had a good time tonight. Oh yeah. And. Uh, whether it's business or, or work or not, we, you just enjoy my entertainment. We were fortunate enough to see you at Madison Square Garden. We were fortunate enough to see you at the Comac Arena, wherever we saw at you. At the Nassau Coliseum. Any the memories Nassau of the Nassau Coliseum? Coliseum? Yeah. yeah. Those were great days. All right, Bob, I'm going to give you Monty's final question. Oh. The Mount Rushmore oh, wow. of professional wrestlers. Who is Bob Backlund's Mount Rushmore pick four. Of, of professional You're not wrestlers. the first one we've done this to. you got to pick four. Who is Bob four. Backlund's I'm, Mount I'm Rushmore? I'm trying to pick out four wrestlers that that were the best. The that, best. That you would put on Mount Rushmore if you could. That that you feel epitomized professional wrestling. These are the four. Who I would... think Don Morocco nice. would deserve some special thing nice. because of what he does. He he, we had some our matches that were fantastic. He was magnificent. Yes, yeah. yes. And then uh, um, uh, even uh, George Steele. Wow, wow that's nice. great. What a, guy, nice. what a guy, and what a character. And he gets the people some way or another mm. throughout the match. Mm. Okay, we got two. Does my buddy Greg get on this thing? You or know, and I, I like, uh, <laughs> I like. Uh, um, Ken Patera. Wow. Great. It, I liked him because he was always about the match. Right. And I had, we had, he helped me. He came, he had my first match with me when, on my first match in the WWF. Wow. And it okay. was down in, uh, in New Jersey. And, and um, he really did some things where he could have just made me look bad. But he did things to make the match look good. And I, and I grew and uh, my level of, in, 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 like, with the fans went up because of what he did for me in the ring. Okay. And then, uh, you know, he, he, I'd get, we had another match, and it was a little better than the one we had before. And then the people get more behind you, and that's what a baby face has to have. Oh, well, we got Morocco, Patera, Steele, and Valentine. I'm going to help you with one. Yeah, Bruno, not, Bruno yeah. San Martino. Bruno. Bruno. Oh, my God. Yeah. I, was, I didn't. I wasn't here that much, so I don't. I didn't really. Right. I knew his name. I knew where he was. Right. But I. I didn't. I wasn't around, watching his matches all the time. Right. Right. And going to Madison Square Garden. Right. So Valentine is on there. So oh, yeah. just before we go, once again, Bob, thank you so much. We have been wanting you on for years. We always hoped that this moment would come, and we are not disappointed in the least. Thank you so much for being here today. No, thank you. And, and Bob, to be honest with you, we always said at the beginning when we started this journey and we've progressed as people started to enjoy the show, True. we said if we had Bob Backlund on and it ended tomorrow, we've achieved what we wanted to yeah. achieve. Yeah. So we thank you for allowing us no, to have this no, opportunity, no, I, I, Bob. I, I, and once again, for the fans out there, one more time, Backlund, from All-American Boy to Professional Wrestling's World Champion, written by Bob Backlund and Rob Miller. Forward by Roddy, Rowdy, Roddy Piper. 
I will tell you, I've read this book. Oh, yeah. It is incredible. And after this interview, I'm going to read <laughs> okay. it again. Absolutely. I'm having one fun with Monty Nefero. And I'm going to play him in a cross face. You're going to, and he's going to go down right now. Yeah. <laughs> So 